Welcome to Plaster Casting for Medical Students. This video is designed to give you the basics of the application of a back slab, a fibreglass cast, and about cast removal. The basic principle of orthopaedic fracture management is reduce, hold, and rehabilitate. Once a fracture is reduced, it needs to be held. The simplest technique is to splint it with a back slab. This is a cast which covers only one side of the fracture on the side which will hopefully prevent further displacement. A back slab is used as the fabric component allows the limb to swell without constricting it and potentially causing compartment syndrome. Casts can be made from a number of materials. Typically plaster or Paris has been used and often still is in accident and emergency departments and it is cheap and easy to handle. The disadvantages are that it is heavier and takes a longer time to set properly, usually several hours. Fiberglass is lighter and sets within minutes, however it is difficult to handle and expensive. A back slab will usually be replaced with a full cast once the swelling has gone down and therefore there is often little advantage in using fiberglass in the acute situation. Application of a back slab. As I previously mentioned, usually we use plaster of Paris to achieve this. Typically, plaster of Paris comes in rolls of different widths. Once the correct width has been selected, a back slab needs to be created. The limb is measured and the appropriate length is rolled out on a flat surface. Typically, five or six lengths are laid out to create the back slab and the excess is cut away. If a forearm back slab is being made, a small segment is cut away for the base of the thumb to fit in on the final product. Once the back slab has been applied, it is held in place with a gauze bandage and it's often easier to soak this first as it makes handling smoother. The back slab is then fitted to the forearm, measured, and final adjustments can be made to make sure that the fit is optimal. A slightly more advanced technique is to round the edges, as this will make it more comfortable later, both at the elbow end and around the hand, where often the back slab ends up quite bulky at the knuckles. Padding is then applied to the limb. This needs to start above the end of the back slab and be rolled down over the limb, overlapping by about 50% each time. Padding needs to be applied right up over the knuckles and around the base of the thumb. There are some pressure points, particularly around the radial styloid and the ulna styloid, which need to be particularly well padded. The plaster of Paris is then dipped in lukewarm water for just a few seconds and the excess water is squeezed out. The plaster of Paris is then applied to the back of the forearm in this case, taking care to position it as you've previously planned and to smooth it gently around all of the pressure points to make sure that there's a good fit. The cast should come up to the level of the knuckles and no further. Once it's in place, the padding can then be folded over the end. And sometimes a tubinette stocking is placed on initially, uh, which helps with this. The gauze bandage is then applied with just a little bit of tension to hold the whole cast in place. This is also the final opportunity to smooth the cast down and make sure that it fits properly. One of the reasons that fiberglass is not routinely used in this particular procedure is that it sets very quickly and the opportunities to adjust it are minimal. A final crepe bandage goes over the top 
to complete the procedure. As the cast sets, it is mildly exothermic and the patient will feel that it's getting warmer, but they need to be warned that the cast will not fully set for several hours and if they flex and extend the wrist, it'll break the cast and make it useless. Removal of a back slab is simple and requires only a pair of scissors. Having said that, it is clearly possible to damage the skin when cutting blind and therefore special plaster scissors are used. These have the lower jaw with an extended blunt tip which can be put under the padding without any risk of cutting the skin. It is then a simple matter of working one's way up through the various layers of padding on the non-cast surface, in this case the volar surface, until the cast is completely free, at which point it can be removed easily. Once the initial swelling has gone down, the back slab is often replaced by a fibreglass cast. Fibreglass is lightweight, sets rapidly, and comes in a variety of sometimes quite lurid colours. The basic principles are the same as the back slab, however, because it is going to be on longer, particular attention is paid to the pressure points, which may need extra padding. Typically, a tubigrip grip bandage is applied first. Again, this is longer than the final cast. And then extra padding is placed around the pressure points, which are the ulnar styloid and around the first web space where the cast has a habit of rubbing if you're not very careful. Again, just as with the back slab, a wool bandage is wrapped round the forearm, overlapping 50% each time. It is even more critical with the application of the fibreglass to make sure there are no kinks and bumps in it as these will be there for several weeks and run the risk of creating pressure points. Sometimes, but not always, a fine elasticated paper layer is applied as this makes the whole bandage a little bit smoother and easier to handle. This step isn't essential and you won't always see it being done. Once everything is ready, the fiberglass bandage is taken out of its waterproof wrapping and dipped in cold water. If the water is too warm, the bandage will set too rapidly and you won't be able to complete the cast. In the forearm, the cast is started about two finger breadths below the elbow crease. This enables the padding in the tubic grip to be folded over the first layer of the cast padding it nicely at the elbow. The cast is then wrapped around the forearm in much the same way as the padding, overlapping by 50% on each turn. A little bit of tension is applied to the cast to enable it to lie snugly, but it is essential that it's not pulled too tight and causing any pressure points or constriction. The particularly tricky part of casting with fiberglass is working around the hand and the thumb and it takes a lot of practice to make it look this easy. If you've made the mistake of using warm water, by the time you get to this point, the cast is already setting and it's impossible to manage. Once the hand has been done, the rest of the casting material is continued back down the forearm towards the elbow, completing a second layer. Again, overlapping by 50% each time. Once the cast has been finished, there is the opportunity for some quick moulding around the fracture site and then by rubbing the cast, it smooths the fibreglass. Sometimes soap or KY jelly is used as well, which makes the final product a little bit smoother on the skin. Removal of any full cast 
is more difficult and requires some specialist equipment. Whether the cast is made of plaster of Paris or fibreglass, the principles are the same. Typically a plaster saw is used and as an awful lot of dust is produced, most of them have integrated suction. The business end is an oscillating saw. This means that it'll cut through hard materials but won't cut through skin. However, it does generate heat and if you keep it against the skin for too long, it can generate a burn. The saw is applied to the cast on a surface that does not have any bony prominences. In other words, the volar or the dorsal surfaces of the forearm rather than the radial or ulnar borders. A rocking, almost bouncing movement is used as this reduces the time that the potentially hot blade is in contact with the skin. As you will see in the next segment, the saw is very noisy and you do have to warn people, especially small children, of this fact. Once the cast has been split up both sides, spreaders are used to break any final adhesions before the plaster scissors can be worked gently up the padding, releasing the cast completely. The patient is now free to start the rehabilitation phase of their treatment. Thank you for watching this video. We hope that you found it of some use and explains some of the principles and the techniques involved in applying simple plaster casts. If you want to know more or want to get involved in casting, then please talk to the plaster technicians or to the surgeons who'd be more than happy to help.